Hello there, everybody. Uh, this is Alexis Conran's show on Channel 5. He's joined by Benjamin Butterworth and Lynn May. This is Lynn May here. Now, Lynn May has absolutely nothing of any value to offer any conversation anywhere. So when the subject of Brexit comes up, she seems to have taken this position of being in favour of it without having any idea why. And this is on full display in this clip here. Uh, let's just get straight into it. Uh, they're discussing the benefits of Brexit, and obviously there are none, but she's going to try and say there are, which doesn't go well at all. Let's take a look. I would struggle to find any measurement of Brexit in which you could say it has been a success. The truth is that they said we'd be richer and freer by leaving the EU and that our health service would function better because it would have more public money available to it. Now, I don't know how anybody could look at those three metrics and think that has happened. You know, we are poorer, our incomes are lower, the NHS is in the biggest disaster it's ever been. And the other reason that people wanted it was to toughen the borders. Not a view I shared, but it's not happened. Mm -hmm. And so I think there is a, a level of hypocrisy and a level of failure like no other British political project since, you know, since Second World War. Lynn, do you agree? No, see, I disagree. And I've said this before on uh, Jeremy Vine. There has been positives to Brexit. Such but as? OK, so, for example, uh, the salaries for blue-collared workers, those in hospitality has increased. We know... What are you talking about? That The salaries of people in hospitality have increased because the minimum wage has increased. People in hospitality are generally paid around the minimum wage. So naturally, when the minimum wage increases, so do their salaries. Can you imagine if the minimum wage was still down at £9.50? Or God forbid what it was back in 2011, something like £6.50. This is not a Brexit benefit. The, the minimum wage has to go up at some point with inflation. In my opinion, it's not anywhere near enough. But anyway, it's certainly not a Brexit benefit. Brexit has nothing to do with the minimum wage and nothing to do with the increase in wages for hospitality workers. Try again, Lynn know that many people, individuals coming here from the EU that had no intention to potentially stay here for long periods of time were able to undercut salaries for pe British workers here. But wages in general, though, have dropped for everybody in the UK. Well, no, not for, not for all sectors. If you speak to those who are in the construction industry, they, they, they will tell you they have not seen an increase like this for a long time because obviously unfortunately for them many of the people in construction have had to either go back or they're no longer here or they're no, there's no longer construction workers coming in by the way a th uh, i think it's one third of construction firms have worker shortages and that's not a good thing by the way especially when you've got net migration approaching a million nowhere near enough houses are being built and there's not enough people to build those houses brexit benefit at an influx of what they were before. So it's actually been a positive. Again, from the FDA, um, food and wine exports has reached its highest yet to date. And I would say this to, to anyone. But if you if you need to have a divorce because of an awful marriage and solicitors come in and make a hash of it, then you blame the solicitors, which I agree with Nigel Farage. I do believe the government have made a complete hash of it. If, your, solic let me if your solicitors have not done a good job with your divorce, are you going to then say, well, I should have stayed with my husband no what a stupid analogy i mean look at her she thinks it's so smart as well doesn't she she, she really thinks that's a gotcha <sighs> no you what, won't what you still need to divorce what happened is that the one you were having an affair with and told you you could have a better life turns out they can't give you a better life at all and the problem i have with nigel farage's argument and the kind of thing that he's been saying on storm's show and other shows is that he's basically saying, oh, those politicians, they're just bad. Oh, those commissioners, they're bad. Oh, those EU people, they're bad. Well, I'm sorry, mate, what have you actually done for us? Everything Farage promised, none of it is here. That's when does he with. start carrying the buck? So what do you mean when you say that's what you okay. agree with? What? I mean, lots of the promises, 350 million for the NHS, the tighter border controls, the fact that Jacob Rees-Mogg was yeah. doing rounds saying food and clothing will be much cheaper. We've never had such... Uh, 
expenses on food and clothing. So which parts have actually come true? Which parts, if someone who's voted for Brexit, who's watching this today, which bits of their lives do you think have got better because of that vote? Well, it, it depends who you're speaking to, number one. And number two, I think... As a country, I how think has it all, I, think, I think it's very unfortunate that we've had, during Brexit, COVID and the conflict with Russia and Ukraine. But it's also very and, easy to, to separate the effects of the pandemic mm. and is of... It, the, it is. I'll tell you why, because you can look at G7 growth and see mm. that the UK is the only one that's actually not growing. Everybody else is but, growing. They've also had a pandemic. They've also had to deal with the war in Ukraine. <laughs> Come on, Lynn. Get out of this one. <laughs> But what I would say is when you do look at European countries, it's not all, you know, roses. They're all growing faster than we are. But they're still in a lot of struggle in terms of various things where you're looking at what's happening in France, what's happening in Poland. And a lot of that is because, say, for example, Poland, they cannot um, control their own destiny, their own policies because of the EU. Poland. Well, I, can we have some specifics? I, I do love it when these people say... Oh, have you seen what's happening in France and what's happening in Poland? They, because they can't... It's all because of the EU, because they can't control their own destiny. Sorry, what's happening? Tell me, what's happening? Well, it's got a we, higher we growth paid, ratio we paid, than us at yeah, the moment. Exactly. They're going to grow at a faster pace. Their I'm productivity saying, is incredibly saying, fast. I'm not now. saying that Brexit hasn't... Uh, gone to plan. It hasn't. And I said this again previously right. on the show. What I'm saying is the government are wholly responsible, like I said, I agree with Nigel Farage, that they, how they have carried this out has been awful. And why I actually would agree with you for Nigel Farage is, if Nigel Farage is going to enter back, the, the problem with um, Nigel Farage and some of the politicians around this, they put out screen-grabbing headline things that would attract people without people going to actually research. What? Like yourself, Lynn, that's exactly how you've ended up in this position of defending the indefensible on national television. You have believed all those headlines and look at you now, floundering. You hear them say that quite often as well. I'm not saying Brexit has been a success. I'm not saying Brexit is going well. I'm not saying Brexit... At what point do you admit it's been a grotesque failure? At which point do you accept we're never going to be as well off as we were? And by the way, we weren't particularly well off then. And we certainly aren't now. What a disaster this was. My God. And by the way, Alexis Conran, what a better job he does than Jeremy Vine ever would. She'd probably have just run roughshod over Jeremy Vine with this drivel. So how about we get Alexis Conran in full time, we move Jeremy Vine into some sort of fruit picking job. Fantastic. Sorted. But Paul Lynn here has been caught up in an unfortunate position. She doesn't seem to realise that Brexit, for some, like Nigel Farage, like Richard Tice, like Ben Habib, it's purely ideological, and she is exactly the kind of mouthpiece they require to keep this up for God knows how long, because it will never be their fault. It will always be the fault of the government of the day not doing it properly. And to be honest with you, the only opportunity we will ever have to shut these people up and to get them to accept it's a failure is actually when they have their hands on the levers of power. And that is something truly unfathomable. It's unthinkable, and we cannot allow it to happen. So unfortunately, yes, we are forever stuck with the likes of Farage banging on about how Brexit has not been implemented properly. And he'll be waffling on about it until the day he dies. Because it's an ideology. Anyway, cheers for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.